we are aware of the fact that um, a lot of companies are struggling with uh, liquidity issues and they choose not to reimburse according to the European law the cost of the tickets. The European law is very clear. It says that the, in the case of cancelling uh, the travel, the passenger is entitled to receive the reimbursement. Uh, the companies can offer vouchers or other services, but only with the agreement of the passenger. Now, uh, there is a lot of talk around this because we know very much uh, the situation, we know very well the situation of uh, many airline companies with liquidity issues. Uh, we know also that there are positive examples. There are companies which are reimbursing um, their passengers the cost of the ticket. So I wouldn't say everyone is uh, doing uh, the same uh, practice. Um, now, uh, what we are thinking at the European Commission is also to encourage member states and uh, companies to make the vouchers more attractive in order to be accepted Commissioner, by the Commissioner, I'm sorry, I've got to um, interrupt there. Uh, These are some airlines, some might have liquidity issues, but when you look at Air France KLM, they've been given a bailout up to the tune of 11 billion euros. Vouchers are not going to cut it for customers who have lost their jobs, customers that have spent, in some cases, up to seven, 8,000 euros. They now found themselves in the middle of a crisis and they need the money now. EU laws say they should get that money back within seven days. What are you doing to ensure that airlines are going to give it back within a week? So listen, instead, uh, so I'm not defending anyone, and I was, uh, I think, very clear on the fact that the regulation is there and it has to be obeyed. But before coming to the European Commission, any customer should, uh, first of all, address the issue with the authorities in the member state, because it, there is uh, consumer protection, there is uh, international possibilities of addressing this uh, shortage for uh, uh, of applying of the EU law. So I'm not defending anyone, and I'm just saying that the companies should uh, pay uh, the cost of the tickets. Now, you mentioned uh, the huge state aids. Uh, this is the fact, a fact that the uh, European Commission stepped in to help the airlines at the beginning of the crisis with the liquidity problems. We modified the regulation on the slots. Uh, we uh, uh, put in place the temporary framework for state aid, uh, enabling member states to step in and help with the liquidity problem. Because it's not only the reimbursement of the tickets which create a liquidity problem. Uh, we have to uh, admit this is just part of their problem. and. Uh, we also understand the fact that they need help in order to maintain the jobs, the uh, high-skilled jobs in the sector, uh, to um, keep the, um, I don't know, the operations still uh, going for uh, cargo purposes or so on and so forth. So, by one hand, a lot of help. I'm, I'm sorry, just to interrupt you here, but, but we spoke to we spoke to another traveller called Gombash Noemi. I just want you to listen to what she had to say about the EU's response to this. Let's just take a listen. I think it's unfair, it's immoral and also illegal. I think that the EU's position is pretty clear. I uh, think that they are on the right side of this. I have seen um, the Commissioner of Transport's, you know, like interviews uh, saying all the right things. The problem is the enforcement and the problem is that the Dutch government and namely the national enforcement body was instructed to let KLM get away with this. So, yeah, I hope that the EU will step up and there will be consequences. So we're hearing there she's hoping that the EU will step up. Earlier on, you're saying that customers have got to go to their national governments. You've got governments such as what uh, Gambash Noemi is there saying, the Netherlands. You've got Germany, which are saying actually the airlines should be able to keep hold of the money. So you've got a huge discord between what the national governments are saying and what EU law states in principle. Have you spoken to these transport ministers of each country to reaffirm the fact that EU law should be the principal law here? Yes, of course. Uh, we are sp uh, speaking all the time. We are going to have uh, tomorrow a Council of Transport Ministers, and I expect this topic to be uh, very high on the agenda. I know these uh, governments are uh, requesting the Commission to change the law, which is not an option for me. I don't think this is the right path. I think they have to put their energy and thinking in making the vouchers more attractive if they want to use mainly this instrument, but allow the passengers to exercise their right to be re 
reimbursed. So we are talking about uh, this kind of issues with ministers, and we will take finally action if the European law will be infringed by member states. But um, in these times of crisis, I would say a lot of people uh, grabbed uh, the first idea uh, on their table, but I do believe that through communication and cooperation, the best practices will uh, start to kick uh, on and um, we will see uh, a full um, respect for the European law and uh, people who choose to get their money back to be reimbursed. But it's been clear that the airlines haven't been respecting European law. Air France and KLM are saying that there are special circumstances here which isn't covered underneath Rule 261-2004, which was set out by the EU. So people aren't respecting the laws, and you're saying that you could take more steps. It's been over a month since your department put out guidance saying that you might take steps. So when will these steps be taken, and what will these steps be to ensure that customers get their money back? So listen again. Uh, we are not. A, I'm not the commissioner for uh, uh, enforcing uh, legislation uh, at consumer protection. So there are national uh, authorities which are responsible primarily of the implementation of European regulation. So my only dialogue here is with the member states, and I'm doing my best to convince them to put pressure on the um, on the companies to respect the European law. I don't take action directly against an uh, airline. Um, my dialogue with the uh, uh, national authorities um, from the member states where they are um, registered and operating. So, yeah, well, I would uh, like to step up personally in uh, the front line, but unfortunately this is not the role of the commissioner. I think the messages are there. We are going to put further guidance uh, for um, 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 member states to make vouchers more attractive, but apart from that, we will have to uh, make them come to the common understanding that uh, this is a European regulation, very well, very well cherished by our people, and who chooses to get its money back, uh, they should be able to, to receive them.